So cystic fibrosis, super high yield topic. This is a disease with the autosomal recessive defect in the CFTR gene. So the CF stands for cystic fibrosis, and then the, the last two letters are more complicated. CFTR gene, however, codes for a chloride channel and has two spe tissue specific effects. In the respiratory and gastric glands, what the CFTR channel normally does is it increases salt and water content in the mucus. So mucus has increased in normal, and the, the, we're looking at the normal one. You get increased salt and water content in mucus in the respiratory and GI tracts. And the way it does that is it increases sodium uh, chloride excretion, and then this gene also decreases sodium reabsorption. Okay, And you should know by now that water always follows sodium. So if you decrease sodium resorption, you also get decreased water resorption. So now you have sodium, now you have sodium, you have water, you have chloride all in your mucus. So it's happy. You get some nice, normal mucus that's not dehydrated. In cystic fibrosis, this gene is missing. Okay, There's no chloride going out, first of all, you don't, you don't see any chloride channel. And now there's no more inhibition of this sodium channel. So you get sodium reabsorption and the water will follow. Okay. So now, because all this water and sodium leaving the mucus, you get this dehydrated mucus. You get dehydrated mucus in the respiratory and gastric glands in cystic fibrosis. And that's, what, that's what's going to cause most of your problems. We're going to talk about these problems later. But it's due to this dehydrated mucus, they're going to cause obstruction. Because so there's super thick, dry mucus. It's going to cause obstruction in the glands in the respiratory tract and the lung, in the GI tracts. Next. I told you there's two, two tissue-specific effects. This is the first one. Second one is in the sweat glands. The CFTR channel pretty much does the opposite effect. Okay, In this case, it increased salt and water in the mucus. In this case, it reduces salt and water in the sweat. In the sweat. Basically, in the sweat glands, it reabsorbs chloride and it helps reabsorb sodium. You reabsorb both of these, and so you have less salt in the sweat. Okay. In cystic fibrosis, however, this doesn't happen, so you're gonna have extra, you're gonna have too much chloride and too much sodium in the sweat. And that's how we're gonna diagnose it, actually. The main diagnosis is the chloride sweat test. You actually make the patient sweat a lot, and you collect all their sweat, and you measure how much chloride is in there, and if there's increased chloride, it's positive for cystic fibrosis, okay? The other way you can do this is not, now we do neonatal screening, and we test for immune, uh, immunoreactive trypsinogen, and if that's increased, that can also diagnose cystic fibrosis. So neonatal screening, again, it's just when the baby gets born, we, we do a bunch of tests on them. We do a blood test, we take their blood, and do a bunch of tests to look for a lot of inherited congenital diseases. So now let's talk about complications and symptoms from cystic fibrosis. I told you, first of all, that most of the problems come from this, the respiratory and gastric glands. Okay, and... Number one, recurrent pulmonary infections in a young Caucasian is very suggestive. Okay, this thing hits Caucasians a lot more than other uh, ethnicities, and what's going to happen is you're going to get the super thick mucus in your lungs. That's not going to drain out. It's not going to be able to be to be removed from your from your airway tract. So it's going to sit there, and bacteria is going to love it. Bacteria is going to just love that mucus, and it's going to grow there, and you're going to get recurrent pulmonary infections. Staph aureus is most common in early infancy, and then Pseudomonas aeruginosa is in adolescence. Okay, this one's very key to know. Pseudomonas aeruginosa is very associated with cystic fibrosis. Now, you can if you have these recurrent pulmonary infections. I already told you about this. I told you recurrent pulmonary infections can lead to bronchiectasis, and that is and that is definitely true in cystic fibrosis. So, recurrent pulmonary infections in a young Caucasian because they're very at risk. They're very, I guess, their their thick mucus puts them at risk for these pulmonary infections. Now, the other thing that happens is GI problems. Number one, pancreatic insufficiency. Because your pancreatic ducts are going to get blocked off by the super thick mucus, so your pancreatic enzymes are not be able to flow up from the pancreas. They're not going to go into the into the intestines. They're not going to help you digest. Your pancreatic enzymes are super important to help you digest everything: carbohydrates, fats, and lipids. So you're not gonna if you don't have this that stuff, you're gonna have problems digesting all that. You're gonna have related problems such as malabsorption. You're gonna have malabsorption of fat soluble vitamins, and then you're also gonna see greasy stools. This is all seen. You all see all this 
in the GI system. I want to give you a little taste of that now because it's, you get pancreatic insufficiency and cystic fibrosis. Other thing is, in, as a newborn, what you're going to see is a meconium ileus. So meconium is the first stool that the baby passes, and it's called meconium because all this other weird stuff in it. It's like amniotic fluid as hairs that it's ingested. That's just, just for you to know, you don't have to memorize it for step one. And ileus means that basically there is hypo, the, the GI tract's not working very well, very well, poop's not really coming out. And that's because that poop, usually there's some liquid in there, and because of the cystic fibrosis, we're reabsorbing all that salt and water. That's the problem with cystic fibrosis. So it gets super thick, and so the feces can't come out. Okay. Now, the other thing you can see is infertility in men, and it's because these people, so people with cystic fibrosis get absence of the vas deferens. And then in females, you're going to get subfertility. And that's because they have super... The pro, this problem applies to the cervical mucus, so their cervical mucus gets very thick and viscous. So sperm can't get through, can't get through the cervix into the ovaries. And then they have amenorrhea, and that's partly due to this pancreatic insufficiency. They have poor nutrition, they get amenorrhea, so they're, they have more problems getting becoming pregnant, but they can still do it. Okay, the, the equipment's still there. The way we treat this is we hit the symptoms. First of all, this is a very multidisciplinary treatment. You have to get, there's like so many people, so many teams involved in treating this. But basically, you treat the respiratory system. You do chest physiotherapy, helps loosen the mucus. Albuterol dilates the bronchioles. You, or aerosolized dornase alpha or hypertonic saline. This all, these both help clear the, the, they reduce the viscosity of the mucus and help you clear it from the, from the respiratory tract. So dornase alpha or hypertonic saline both reduce the viscosity of the mucus. Okay. Because you just put some, you put a bunch of saline, you put a bunch of sodium in here. And what I, what did I say? Sodium, water always follows sodium, right? It's osmolarity. It's not super high osmolarity. Water's going to go this way. And you're going to make it less viscous. Okay. So that's the respiratory system. Chest physiotherapy, albuterol, and you reduce the viscosity of the mucus. GI system, pancreatic insufficiency. We, we can give them pancreatic enzymes. We can supplement pancreatic enzymes. And I told you, these patients are not going to be able to absorb fat-soluble vitamins because they need that pancreatic enzymes to help digest, basically to break down those fats. So they're going to be missing vitamins A, D, E, K, A, D, E, K, A, I call it vitamins A, D, E, K. You see that a lot. You can see it a lot in the GI system again. So you can supplement this as well. Okay. So that's it for cystic fibrosis. The key here is that CFTR gene coding for that chloride channel with two tissue specific effects. Make sure you know these tissue specific, specific effects. Make sure you know what it does normally. And then obviously if you know what it does normally, then you know what it does when it's abnormal, aka when it's missing, when it's not working. Okay. And that's when it's not working, you get cystic fibrosis. Okay. Again, complications, aka symptoms, recurrent pulmonary infections and in young occasion. You get GI symptoms, pancreatic insufficiency, meconium ileus, or pulmonary GI. You see that over and over again. Last thing to know is the infertility in men from absence of the vas deferens. You get subfertility in women. So that's it for cystic fibrosis.